And if you feel like it's ordinary, average Wednesday night, then you're in the right place. Because God's about to turn you upside down, inside out, and do something in your spirit. Fresh and new. Hallelujah. I sense his presence here tonight. Amen. I want you to know that we've been set up. This is divine setup. It's an inside job. God's trying to do something on the inside of us tonight. Ben and I are thrilled to be here. And she's going to come in just a moment, but I want to say something. Um, I've been blessed the past few nights by the ministry of the worship and word. Especially by the ministry of the word. The message last night about the forerunner's anointing, if it was for no one but me, amen, I received that in my spirit. And I appreciate this man of God, Pastor Shuler, preparing the way. So there would be a lot of preachers that would get up here and they would talk out their insecurity and say, oh, it's going to be so hard to follow the man of God. But I'm thankful for the, this man of God and the price he paid Amen. to make it easy for me to step up here. I respect him tonight. There's no inferiority between us. That's why there's a flow tonight in the Holy Ghost. Hey! Brother Shooter, you didn't know. You wrestled and didn't understand. You fall in your spirit to even do this, but God is setting you up, sir. And he's church up. And all the crowd of folk who are here tonight, you're not here by accident. God's going to use every one of you if you allow God to use you. Every one of you that are here tonight, Drow, thank you for being here. We love you. And we love and respect your pastor. Now I'm going to say this, but I'm just itching on the inside of Most preachers wouldn't say this either, but I ain't most preachers. I respect the man of God that will tell his congregation, I want you to be at the honey pack church of God. Amen. We want to have church in our building, but we want to have church. You see, most men of God will be afraid of that. They'd be afraid of the minority in their church, the minority establishment who would give them some backlash. But we're going to cancel that in your life and in your ministry, Pastor. And then there would be other men of God who would have been afraid to do that because they thought if they cancel service, they'd have an economic downturn in their church and it had to close. But God's going to bless you, man of God. He's going to bless you, God. And he's going to use every one of you tonight in this house. You going to let him use you? I know you are. My wife's going to come and straighten all this mess out now. I don't open her mouth and suck her foot. Most men say their wife's their better half, but she's my best half. I want you to worship God with her as she ministers to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Come on, Shabbat. 
Come on now.
not just be hearers, but be doers of the word, Father. Challenge us tonight. Change us. Transform us. Now. That one that's in the valley of decision that feels like walking out on you. Turn it their back tonight. Turn them around, God. Lord, let a wave of your spirit get them and turn them around tonight. Lift it up on Sunday night. That one that's about to end their marriage, God. Tonight, may waves of glory crash on them and transform them tonight, God. Those that are discouraged, God. Those that are depressed, God. Those that are having suicidal thoughts, Father. We bind the works of the enemy. We the blood of Jesus right now, and we bind the spirit of alcoholism. We bind the spirit of drug addiction. We bind the spirit of, of sexual immorality. We bind the spirit of adultery and fornication. We bind the spirit of homosexuality in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind the spirit of pride and arrogance and jealousy and envy. Who are Messiah? Satan, you may have came in one way, but you got to flee seven by the blood. Begin to 
cre to create tension with the Jews and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious rulers of his day. And that growing tension caused the, these disciples of John to get with the religious people, with the scribes and the Pharisees. And as they got with the scribes and Pharisees, uh, they went to Jesus and they began to ask him, why do the disciples of John fast? You've got to ask and realize who's asking this. It's the scribes and the Pharisees. And they're getting John's disciples to ask him, why do those guys fast? Amen. But your disciples are eating and drinking and having a big party. And Jesus told them something very simple. He said, when the bridegroom is with the bride, they don't fast. It's party time. It's time to celebrate. It's time to rejoice. It's time to shout. <laughs> but they said, he said, one day the bridegroom will be taken away. And they will fast. They will fast. They will begin to fast and seek the bridegroom. And he begins to tell them a very, very complex, if you will, and at to some point confusing story. He begins to tell them no one puts a piece of new garment on an old one. What does that mean? No one takes a new piece of garment to put on a hole on their pants as a patch. Because if they put that new piece of garment on that old, tattered, torn, weakened, worn garment, the new garment will not hold and it will tear away. That's what he was saying. And he also went on to say, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine will burst the wine skins. Now we've got to understand something here tonight. Jesus is talking to them about a container, a wineskin. He's talking to them about content, new wine. And he's talking about consumers, the scribes and the Pharisees and John's disciples. So he's talking about a container, a wineskin. He's talking about new wine, the content. And he's talking about people who are going to consume that new wine. And now, you and I in Pentecost, we know that Jesus here is referencing the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because the Bible, in, in, in the Old and New Testament, the Holy Spirit is symbolized by many things. He is symbolized by wind. He is symbolized by fire. He is symbolized as a dove. He is symbolized as, as a seal. And also here, he is symbolized as new wine. Amen. Now, I want you to know tonight... The problem is not the new wine. See, I can get up here and I can go off on the new wine. And I can preach and teach and tell you all kinds of stuff about the new wine. But there's nothing wrong with the new wine. The new wine has not changed. The new wine has not weakened. The new, the new wine has not grown old. The new wine has not gotten some type of bacteria in it. The new wine is still as strong today as it was when the Holy Ghost of Messiah, when the Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost. So the problem is not with the new wine. Come on, brother Fred. The problem is with the old wine skins. <laughs> but here's where we're going to go with this tonight. See, the problem is with the wine skins. And Jesus said, you have to put new wine into a new wine skin. See, that word new, Jesus is meaning that it is a form or a quality of newness. And depending on the context, it means different. It means uncommon. It means renewed. It means refreshed. It means reconditioned. I'm talking about the wine skin. I'm talking about the old wine skin. Jesus says it can be different. Jesus says it can be renewed. Jesus said it can be refreshed. And Jesus said it can be reconditioned. And what God is saying, you and I are the wine skins. And some of us, we come from our higher, have a blood of our heart, have allowed the things of the world to cause our wine skin to get old. And what we need is it to be uncommon. It needs to become renewed. It needs to be reconditioned again. Come on, Brother Chris. Amen. Amen. See, you and I are the container. You and I are that container. And what Jesus was telling these scribes and these Pharisees and these religious leaders, he was in essence telling them the old 
old. The old can't comprehend the new. The old can't understand the new that is coming. The old is dry. The old is stale. The old has no power. The old, he my Messiah, it causes you to be comfortable. But the new will cause you to be uncomfortable. The new is fresh. The new is renewed. And the new is prepared. I see the businessman here tonight's mind would go would go off with this. See the businessman would think after they got finished using that wine skin, they would throw it away, and then he'd go kill some more goats. He would drive them rascals out, and he would make a new wine skin, and he would make mas dinero more money. Yeah, but that's not what they did during this time. Come on, boy. They would not throw the wine skin away. They would put it up until the next year when the wine was produced. But over that time, over that year, the wine skin would become dry. The wine skin would begin to develop bacteria on the inside of it. You're not hearing me tonight. The wine skin would begin to shrink. It would begin to shrink. It would get dry. And it would create bacteria. Yeah. But you know what they would do? They would take that wine skin and they would go get some water and they would soak that wine skin in water. Yeah. They would get the water hot, Brother Scotty, because hot water would kill the bacteria on the inside of the wine skin and hot water would cause the leather to, that was dry to become soft and pliable again. See, I said the problem is not with the wines, new wine. The problem is with the old wine skin. And see, if you tried to put new wine into an old dry wine skin, it would burst. Why would it burst, Brother Gerard? Because I told you, what did I tell you? It's dry. It shrank. He had bacteria on the inside of it. And new wine every year would come from new grapes. You, you got to hear this. You got to see this tonight. It would come from new grapes each year. They would take those new grapes and they would do something to those new grapes that's very interesting to me, Brother Shuler. They would take those new grapes and they would put them in a vat and they would begin to stomp those new grapes. <laughs> they would begin to stomp them. And as they stomp them, as they crush them, the flesh of that grape would break. And the juice on the inside of it would begin to pour out. But there would be no new wine without the stomping or the crushing of the grape. You're not hearing me tonight. And what Jesus was saying, that one day the bridegroom would be taken away. But before he was taken away, his body, he would be crushed. He would be bruised. He would be beaten upon his back. He would take strikes in his flesh for your healing. And he would die. Come on, Brother Chris. Come on, Brother Chris. And he would rise again. And when he rose again, he would be able to make new wine skins. And he would be able to
not comfortable sometimes. Because in the context of your vat overflowing, the writer of Proverbs says there has to become some chastening. And what chastening means is discipline. You, you got to understand who was in this story that Jesus was talking about. His disciples were there. They're not mentioned, but they're in the background. He'd been calling them old boys. There was the disciples of John the Baptist, and there were the religious folk of the day, the scribes and the Pharisees. And actually, the scribes and the Pharisees were accusing the disciples of Jesus and the disciples of John. What am I trying to say? You can't be a disciple without discipline. Come on, brother. Come on. You can't be a disciple without discipline. And the reason that we've got dried up, decrepit wineskins that have no new wine in them is because we have been living ungodly, unrighteous, self-fulfilling lives that have not made room for the new wine of the Holy Spirit. And you know that some of you, God has been dealing with you in the past six months. And he's been trying to get your attention. And you know, you think the reasons that your pocketbook has been hit. And you think the reasons that things have happened to your children and people have gotten ugly on your job. is God's been trying to tell you, I've been trying to discipline you, my son. I've been trying to discipline you, my daughter. He said, don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Joel 2.23 says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and new oil. Now here's where we're about to go with this. Are you ready for this? Hallelujah. You gotta, you gotta see who's in the story. Jesus. His disciples are behind him being, being accused. The disciples are John of John are being used. You know what? All those people I just mentioned are here today. Jesus is here. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Come on. You know what? His disciples are here. Come on, brother. 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 You've been accused of being a little weird. You've been accused of being a little crazy. You've been accused of doing things that, you know, just the religious establishment. They just think, oh, why are they doing that? Why are they praying to God like that? Why are they doing praying so much on their job? And then there's another majority of you, John's disciples. You're getting set up by the religious folk. You're just a puppet on a string. And you're being coached and being used by the religious establishment to go and run your mouth and ask these questions, trying to trip up the master. You gotta see who's in the story. Because you gotta understand you're in this story. And this text I just read to you is vitally important to the new wine. Why? Is it vitally important to the new wine? Because it says this: it says, be glad. It says, Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. Without rain, there would be no grapes. Without no rain, there would not be grapes to make the new wine. And he said, I have given you that caused the rain to come down, the former and the latter rain in the first month, the threshing floor shall be full of wheat in the bad shore of the new wine. And this is what you got to see tonight. You gotta understand that when he says the former and the latter rain in the first months, the first portion of that text is talking about rain. It's talking about little, literal wet drops that come down and hit you upside your head. That's what he's talking about. Literal raindrops. But the former and the latter rain, when you translate it into Hebrew, he's not talking about water. That's right. He's talking about teachers of righteousness. 
He's talking about teachers of righteousness. He said, I sent them in the Old Testament, and I sent them in the New Testament. I sent teachers of righteousness. And that's what he was trying to tell these scribes and Pharisees. You can't put the new in the old. They just won't mix. They just don't mix. And he was trying to tell them that the righteous teacher had come. had come and he would judge righteously because Matthew 5 and 17 this is what he said he said I did not come to destroy the law and the prophets come on brother Greg. I did not come to destroy the ten commandments come on, brother. I did not come to destroy but I came to fulfill them I came to fulfill as the teacher of righteousness because the former is going to give way to the latter. And God's trying to raise up teachers of righteousness in this place full of new wine. What was Jesus saying to a pastor? He was saying, the problem is not the law. The problem is you. The problem is not the material to be taught. The problem is the teachers. If we have a dilemma in the United States of America, we no longer have teachers of righteousness. Why? Because we have people who do not have a teachable spirit. I'm not a priest right here. We have people who do not have a teachable spirit. They'll say, you can't tell me anything. I've been in the church all my life and all I have is a bobblehead doll. I'll just shake my head even though I don't understand it, even though I don't like it, even though I like it, I'm just going to shake my head. Even though I'm shaking my head saying yes, but in my heart I'm not believing it. In my heart I'm rejecting it, but I'm saying yes. Come on, Brother Chris. Because I don't have a teachable spirit. Pastor, you can't tell me what to do. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Young people that tell their parents, you, you can't tell me what to do. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 And some of y'all about to start accusing, saying, well, bless God, wait to even have children. Yeah, you just wait. They're, they're, they're high, their high heels going to get tan and shade. If some of you would train your children up in the way that they should go, in the ways of the Lord, and if you would not spare the Lord, and if you would discipline them, you would That's what we let doctors call it. Uh, but you know what that is? That's a rebellious spirit. And if you take your belt off and pull that up, that's it. You know what Jesus said? Teachers of righteousness. When you discipline your children, you're teaching them righteousness. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. But when you let them go do what they want to, and they don't stand up in your face and tell you what they're going to do. Come on. Come on. Come on. You ain't no teacher, friend. You're the student. He said, I'm going to raise up teachers of righteousness. And they're going to be full of new wine. Joel 3.18 says, And it will come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drip with new wine. Anybody ready for that day? I'm prophesying that the mountains are about to drop new wine. They're about to drop new wine on your top. They're about to drop new wine when you get up at the breakfast table. They're about to drop new wine when you go to school. They're about to drop new wine when you come into the house of God. The mountains. I'm going to go tight. I'm not going to get the drop. Great drops of the presence of the Almighty God in our midst. The hills shall flow with milk, and all the brooks of Judah shall be flooded with water. A fountain 
fountain shall flow from the house of the Lord and water the valley of the acacias. Did you hear what he said? He said the new wine is going to drop from the mountains and a fountain is going to flow. A fountain of water is going to flow from the house of God. Let it come on. Now, this is what you got to understand. Why, why is God trying to make your wine skin good? Because He's not going to let that wine drop from the mountain to the ground. Right. He's got to have something to put it in. Yes, God. Yes, God. Father God, don't waste nothing. His sons and daughters might waste. But Father, don't waste nothing. That's right. And that wine that's going to drip from that mountain, he's looking for a wine skin to put it in. You and me. You and me to be that wine skin. Jesus here is talking. He's talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit that was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And you know the story. Those 120, they were in that upper room and they were praying and they were believing God, but they didn't know what was coming. They did not know what was coming. They did not know that a, that a sound as of a rushing mighty wind was going to fill that place and that cloven tongues like a fire was going to divide upon each of them. They didn't know they were about to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them. They didn't know that. But when the power came upon them, they did not sit in that upper room. They got up from where they were and they went down into the streets. They went down into the marketplace. And they were not quiet, but they were boldly proclaiming the wonderful works of God. They were speaking in other tongues. And as they spoke in other tongues, Acts 2 5 says that there were Jews from the whole earth gathered and they heard them speaking in their own languages and they said what does this mean so I asked what does this mean in Acts 2 13 Donnie Wayne the Bible says others mocked and you know what they said they said these men are full of new wine that's what they said those that have been accusing those that had been puppets on the string. Those that had been unteachable. Teachers of lawlessness and right, unrighteousness. They begin to say they are full of new wine. And Peter stands up and says, these men are not drunk as you suppose. They're not drunk like you think. Because it's just nine o'clock in the morning. The moonshiner hadn't had time to make the shine. <laughs> Come on, Brother Grant. Hey, some of you all here know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he had not had time to get the top off the bottle. What we're seeing is the power of Almighty God. It's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm about to say something here that's going to make some of you mad as a wet hen. But I hope you get soaked in the Holy Ghost. Come yeah. on. No. <laughs> Yesterday I was late coming to church. I was in a meeting with one of our pastors. He pastors in a, in a relatively small town like Lampac. And he was telling me of the problems that they're having with the influences of drugs. Drug abusers. People coming into their city doing drugs and alcoholism. He was telling me all these things. And as I was coming down the road, I was thinking, we got the same epidemic right here in the We got the same problem. The mill hills have converted to crack town. That's exactly right. They have. And everybody in Hunting Path, they know a drug head. I, I see them walking down the road. Me and Daniel see them. <laughs> yeah, there's one of them. We know them. You know them. And you know that they're using those drugs and that alcohol to get it high, to take their, their, themselves outside of their normal reality. And there's other people who do hypnosis and other hallucinogenic things to take them away from their pain and to take them away from their reality. And what God was saying to me is, 
church would be the church. And the church would become those new wire skins and get full of the new wire. And that Holy Spirit would not be a substitute. He would not be a substitute to their, to their alcoholism or to their drug addiction, but he would be the cure. That's right. That's right, brother. But the problem is there's not enough of us full of the new wine to give you a drink. We're too full of ourselves. We're too full of judgment. We're too full of wrath. We're too full of hatred. We're too full of envy. We're too dry on the inside to give that old wine a lot more drink. God says, I called you to be teachers of righteousness. See, Jeremiah 23 and 9 says this. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. My heart is broken within me because of the prophets. What does that mean, Brother Chris? It means that God is doing exactly what the man of God said last night. He's raising up prophets. He's raising up apostles to bring the truth to us, to break our hearts. To break our hearts. This meeting tonight is about your heart. If your heart gets healed, then your diabetes gets healed. If your heart gets healed, then your high blood pressure gets healed. If your heart gets healed, your cancer can get healed. This is about your heart tonight. And he said, because of the prophets, I am broken. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man. And like a man whom wine has overcome. Because of the Lord and because of his holy words. What God is trying to do in these last days is cause us to be so intoxicated with his love that all life, that all the deceitfulness of riches, that all the problems in my family, if you're here tonight bound by drugs and alcohol, the Spirit of God can overwhelm you and overcome you tonight. And give you not a fix, but He can fix you. He can heal you. He can deliver you. It's time to allow the Holy Spirit to break us. We, that we become broken for the drug addict. See, we're not there yet. Yeah, got quiet by now. We don't want the drug addict coming in our church. We don't want the drunk coming in our church. They might steal. They might bother somebody. But if you're going to touch honey past South Carolina, that's who you're going to have to touch. Come on, Brother Chris. That's right, Brother Chris. Appreciate it. Well, I hate to say it. All the people with the dinero, with the money. That's right. That's the most precious. We like them. We like them in that is. But they always were in the Baptist church. <laughs> <laughs> Preach it, brother. Tell it, brother. There's about two or three thousand people out here. Who don't have money. But they have a heart. And that heart is broken. And God is saying, I want to break you. And I want you to be full of my love so that you can reach them. Reach them before it's eternally too late. Turn to your neighbor and say it's new wine time. But God needs a new wine skin. I'm about to try to wind this up right here. <laughs> Jesus makes it clear that his new message of the kingdom, that his new message of grace, that his new message of love, that his new message of joy and peace can only be successfully deposited in the old heart 
that has been reconditioned and is soft and is pliable and is ready to extend itself to new limits as the revelation of the kingdom continues to grow. You see, if your wine skin is dry, if you are dry spiritually, if you have bacteria on the inside of you, and, and you cry out to God and want new wine, you want the Holy Spirit to refill you, and you have not had your wine skin reconditioned, what will happen is, if new wine goes into an old wine skin, that new wine will still have to ferment, literally. The grapes will still have to ferment, and what will happen, it will begin to expand. And gases will begin to bubble up. And if that wine skin is dry, it will crack. It will bust it open. God said, I'm trying to make you ready. It's not about playing this plane. Are you ready? You ready? First miracle. First miracle that Jesus did, he did it at a wedding. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to a wedding. Come on, brother. Yes. He said the bridegroom would be taken away. Yes. And the bride would fast. And the first miracle he did, Tammy, was at a wedding. And his mama came to him and he says, they have ran out of wine. And what did Jesus say? He said, go get me some water pots. Yeah. <laughs> now, are, are you with me? Are you with me tonight? Is this okay? Yeah. Now, most people would have thought, he should have said, go get me some wine skins. But he did. He said, go get me some old common water pots. And it blew their mind. And see what God is looking for. He's looking for some water pots. He's looking for some common people. Just like you and me. You don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a lawyer. You can be like Peter. And just be an old common fisherman. See that's what it made those scribes and Pharisees mad. They wanted to know. Jesus just got some old common people. Fishermen and tax collectors. These are sinners to, to the religious people. Yeah and you know what. I was one a sinner, but in my sin, oh, I was still a sinner. Christ died for me. I'm just an old common water pot. And you know what, Mark? God wants to use an old common water pot like you on the police force to win more police to him. Come on, brother. He's looking for common water pots like you. Not like me, not like you. Common water pot. Is there any common water pots here? Okay. An electrician. An engineer, a school teacher, a carpenter. Yeah, Ron, he wants to use you. Because what he's going to do is he's going to tell him to fill that water pot up to the brim. Come on, brother. Fill it up to the brim with water. Come on, brother. Sister, I prophesied in your life last night. What did I tell you? I said, how do you know if a, if a glass or a vessel is full? How do you know? Fill it up to the rim. And just an eyedropper is full until it runs over. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? You didn't hear what I said. He said fill it up to the rim. But it's not full until it's overflowing. Some of you got water about right here. Some of you just ain't really good. Some of you got it about right here. Some of you got it right here. Some of you got it about right here. But tonight the Holy Spirit's going to take a little eye drop. He's going to drop just a little drop. Oh, yeah. And when he drops that little drop, that water is going to turn to wine. Come and it's going to begin to begin to overflow. Your mouth's going to overflow with new wine. Somebody bless him tonight. Slow it, slow it, slow it, slow it, slow it. Proverbs 
Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 1 says, Wisdom, say wisdom, wisdom, has built her house. She has hewn out seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat and she has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. And tonight, God's going to mix the wine by wisdom. Brother Shuler, you didn't know what God was doing. Pastor Caleb, you didn't know what God was doing. But God sent me by tonight to tell you that he's about to mix the wine. He's about to mix the wine and dry it up with the wine and honey pack church of God. Seeds. 
The mountains shall drip with sweet wine. And all the needles shall overflow with it. What does that mean? It means that in these days there's going to be an acceleration. There's going to be an acceleration of the goodness and the grace and the glory of God. That's right. If you're here tonight and you don't know this Jesus, you don't know Him, you may think you have a religious idea of Him like these scribes and Pharisees. But if you don't know him in a personal way, if you don't know the Father in a personal way, tonight you can confess your sin. And he will receive you. And you will have eternal life. Tonight, if you're here, I want everybody to stand with everybody. If you're here tonight, if you're here tonight, there's three things we're about to do real quick. Three things. If you're here tonight, and you don't have a personal, intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father, the one that created you, I'm going to ask you to do something very brave and very bold. I'm going to ask you to step out from where you are, and if you can't come along, if you can't come along, I want you to take someone by the hand and ask them to come to this altar with you. And we're not going to embarrass you, we're not going to make you do anything you don't want to do, but we're going to help lead you to the Father. Is there anybody that would come and say, I'm going to give my life to Christ? Anybody. Young, old, it don't matter. Come. Anybody. Anybody? 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 Second. Secondly, God has been preparing some wine schemes here tonight. He's been preparing our wine schemes. And there's, there's several of you who have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have not received that empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But tonight, you want to receive that precious gift from heaven. Tonight, you're not going to have to fight. We're not going to force it down. All you've got to do is simply receive tonight this gift from heaven, this new wine, the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit that will intoxicate you with the love of the Father. Is there anybody here that would come to this altar and say, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Anybody? 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 You want to come? Come, 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 come. Anybody? You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's, that's, come on. Come on. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Anybody, come on. Come on. Hold back. Come on. I want you to line up. Right. You keep, your, keep your mind. This is the third thing. This is what I'm about to do something real crazy right here. I do something real crazy right here. Are you ready to be teachable? Well, God's going to use you to see these people baptized in the Holy Spirit. you got to listen to them. God's going to use you, driver. This is what I feel the Holy Spirit telling me to do. I want all of the deacons from the Honey Pack Church of God to come right down here in the middle aisle. Get on, get on my left. On the line, on the left, all the deacons. Come on, all the deacons. Come on, come on, come on, on the left. All you, all of you are deacons. Come out there, Donnie Wayne. Come out there. Come up here. Get on the left hand side. I want all of the deacons from drugs to get up here on the right hand side. Deacons, come on. Yeah, line up right there. Line up, line up. Uh, don't keep, don't keep praising God. Keep worshiping. Get your, get your mind off everybody around you. God gonna baptize you right there, sister. I don't have to put my hands on you. He says, receive. Receive, receive right there. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive. Shoot, come, come, come. He There he is, right there. There he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This man's about to be mixed. This man's about to be mixed. Come here, Pastor. You and your wife, come here. Pastor Caleb, Pastor Ashley, come here. Come on, come on up here. Get right here in front of your deacons. Get up here in front of your deacons.
If I see you together, I'm going to get on you. I'm in love, but I'm going to get on you. You know I love you, don't you? Hugs, hugs. I want every one of you from drugs. I want you to find somebody from the 100 pound or a visit. I want you to find somebody right now. Come on. And you come this way. Find somebody. A lady, find a lady. A man, find a man. Come on. Who are you The wine's about to be mixed. Hey, 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 hey. Hold on. Stop. Pull it up. Pull it up. Come on. Find somebody. All of them. All of them move. Move.